Hi, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and today we're going to talk about offset, accented characters, and composite characters. Now, when this situation comes up, it's because you've got a font, say, like this one here, Garamond, that's got all kinds of accented characters in it, but there's no more room to put the characters that you want. So I'm going to pretend like we're working on a font that needs more accented characters than what's available here. And I think that Hawaiian and Navajo both have uh, characters with dots underneath them. So what I've done here is I've taken the mid dot character and moved it down. And so what I can do now is open up the metrics window. and I'm going to type a vowel in here and what I can do in the metrics window is click on the character and you get these lines for the side bearings left and right as well as the kerning line down the middle don't touch any of those when you're creating an offset character instead just click and hold your mouse down on the character itself and move it over like that and now you have another step we have the right hand side bearing here there's nothing in the M square right now so the cursor would come all the way over here to the R line when somebody types these characters so what we want to do is take the R line and move it over and we'll move it one M unit away from the left side bearing this also could be done in the outline window but the main reason I'm pointing this out is because you it's a cardinal sin if you ever put a side bearing on top of another side bearing there's got to be at least one M unit available so you see now when somebody types this character that the cursor will come to rest right there where the right hand side bearing is now what we've accomplished by doing this is now when somebody uses this font the uh, the dot has been instructed to always go this far offset under any character that it's typed with so if you install this font go out into Microsoft Word type E and then if you know the keystroke for the mid dot let's go take a look at it on the PC I'm viewing by decimal here you see all right on the PC it would be holding down the alt key and then using a numeric keypad to go 0277 if I were in Microsoft Word and I typed uh, the letter E and then alt 0277 I would have a nice mid dot underneath my character I could type an A in alt 0277 and have a mid dot underneath my A and so forth. So this is what we call a negative offset character. Okay, now I want to talk about another way we could have done this. Okay, now here's another trick we could have done. We could have taken the letter E and copied it as a component or what is known as a composite character. We find a slot here that we don't need let's take care of slot 137 we'll just delete whatever's in there you see I pasted the E in as a component now what I'm going to do is go down and find that mid dot again and this time I'll go ahead and copy it as a component also come back in here and do paste and I paste this in as a component and I've got two components here uh, these are known as composite characters because they're made from other characters now why are we doing this one reason may be because we're building such a big font that we need more room and another trick is when you use composite characters uh, the font uses less memory because the font knows that when you type this character is this character number 137 to go and get the E from the E slot and go and get the dot from the mid dot slot and when you type alt 0 137 combine those characters together you know on the screen in Microsoft Word 
Now, some final issues. The letting or the line spacing may become an issue. As you notice now, I've got a dot under the E. So now I may have some letting problems. Tight letting would allow the characters to touch. And sometimes the font designer doesn't care. Loose letting would allow more white space between characters. You can look at our tutorial about letting issues for more details on that. Now, while we're on this subject, there are certain accents. For instance, the cedilla. Let's see if we can find the cedilla here in this font. Use with Spanish characters. Here's one here. Sometimes when you're creating accents this way, the accent might need to become part of the character that they are accenting. I would not use a composite character or an offset character. Instead, I would put the accent and the desired character into a slot that you don't need for anything else. Make sure that slot is defined by the encoding you're using. Let me just take a side trip out here to, to let you see that characters that are not defined in an encoding, they have uh, uh, double asterisks. So don't use any of those with a double asterisk. Let's get back to talking about the cedilla. Okay, so in this case, we're not going to use offset characters. We're not going to use composite characters. Instead, we paste both characters into a slot that's not needed but is part of the encoding vector. And what we'd have to do if there's overlap is to go to the Element, Remove Overlap menu. Thank you for watching the Photographer tutorial series. There's more details in your Photographer user manual. And let us know if there's other topics you'd like to see covered in the series.